Welcome back to the Who's Yanks. We talk everything Canada soccer and U.S. soccer. Tonight we're going to do a recap on the final game of the year out of both the USA and Canada. Where in this one, you know, this wraps up the calendar year. And as well as the last video of the 2021 calendar year for the channel. And uh, my time flew by fast here. But this one was between the USA and Bosnia and Herzegovina. If I'm saying that right. Herzegovina, my bet. And uh, but for for the sake of the video, I might just keep, refer to them as Bosnia in short. And yeah, the Yanks put up a, a interesting fight against the Dragons. Um, we'll get more into the details here, but the game ended one 0 in favor of the Yanks. Uh, USA still at late thanks to um, Colorado Rapids. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about him, but um, he was great, and he just came off the bench and made an impact, and that was really great. But right now let's go to the um before we get to the starting lineup i do want to talk about the objectives which what was planned for this uh game from greg berhocher in the usa and um basically the first objective was to win which they did and the second one was to expand the talent pool as a lot of the people who played today were young and upcoming talents who are many of which are going to uh european teams rumor has it so you know a lot of them also come out of the FC Dallas Academy, and that's really, really just quality from FC Dallas, showing their uh, their factories just continued, right? Their unstoppable, unstoppable growth of talent, and I'm just it just makes everybody for USA um, fans too, and um, North American soccer. I mean, this just benefits everyone, um, as you know, the more players we send to Europe, the better everything can be, and you know, the more they'll learn and develop, and I can't wait to see what they'll do especially in the coming competitions, as maybe a few of these names were recognized in January and February during the World Cup qualifying window against the USA has Canada, but they play the second game, so they have, before that, El Salvador, then they travel to Canada, and then they come back to Honduras and Minnesota. But I'll talk more about that uh, later, but right now, let's get into starting 11. Um, in this one, we have Matt Turner from New England Revolution, uh, Brooks Lennon, Walker Zimmerman, Henry Kessler, George Bello, Johnny Cordoso, Jesus Ferreira, Christian Rodan, Jordan Morris, Ricardo Pepe, and Kellen Acosta. And so you can already see the number of young talents who are starting a night and a lot of SC Dallas chemistry. Trying to get that chemistry going, and it kind of did a little bit. I mean, obviously they're young and there's still a lot to develop, but... Um, you just, the more that you keep this specific group together, I mean, the better they'll get, but without further ado, let's dive right into this, shall we? Um, right off the bat, Bosnia just comes out pressing the USMNT, and I mean, the US does a decent job defending, there's no goals allowed, but the warning signs here for the USA. But then the 13th minute, Crystal Rodan dribbles down the sideline and crosses it to an open Ricardo Pepe, and Ricardo Pepe misses wide. Huge miss for him and the USA. This was their chance to go 1-0 in the 13th minute. But it is what it is. The game goes on. In the 17th minute, the Dragons, or this is Bosnia's uh, team nickname, the Dragons have a 2v2. Uh, but Matt Turner comes up with a phenomenal save. I mean, he made it look easy. As the Bo I don't know what he was doing. I mean, the Bosnia could have just sh dribbled in a little bit and aimed a corner. I mean, he kind of, but Matt Turner just read it well, so... All, all kudos to Matt Turner, and um, from there, basically, just until the 31st minute, the USA just possession just looks sloppy at this point, as they had trouble just stringing together a couple passes, and this was just, I mean, for me, this was frustrating to watch, as I was like, come on, fight back, as Bosnia just continued to pressure, and the USA just looked lackluster at this point, and once again, I do know that this was a young lineup, domestic based so no Europeans but still I mean I really expected better over especially what was an inexperienced a very I heard inexperienced uh, Bosnian team so um, I, I just wish I saw more from effort from these guys in that time but it is what it is it didn't hurt didn't seem to hurt them at this point and uh, however though the US did seem to identify uh, Bosnia's weak spot as they would just dribble down the sideline, especially the right-hand sideline, and then cross it in. Only thing was that nobody could get a foot on it. You saw Ricardo Pepe do the same thing. You saw Jordan Morris swinging a couple balls, 
and just unfortunately no US MNT player got their toe to it and they just couldn't finish it and that's why Bosnia wasn't really threatened at this point I mean they had a couple of threats but I mean the US was all over them on terms of the sideline now in terms of possession and stuff it was until the four until the 40th minute um, it was it was a little iffy but here we go the 40th minute though this was arguably the game-changing moment and even the announcer says that there could be controversy behind it as Amar uh, Bigic uh, has a late nasty tackle on Kellen Acosta and it's just a straight red you know no questions asked from the referee he gives him a straight red to Bigic and Bigic is out and the Dragons are down to 10 men as his tackle was high I mean there's this is bad I know and the announcer is trying to plead his case say he should at least be a yellow card before a straight red but I'm sorry um, this is a straight red because he was studs up, right? That's the common MLS rule that we see. Studs up tackle is always unacceptable. And he just came kind of flying in there violently. And I don't know. I don't know why many people think this is controversial, but I, I don't know. Hey, I'm, I'm open to any hearing any opinions in the comments. So many people say that, you know, as they said, the announcer said that this was just a friendly match, so you didn't have to pull out the straight red, but... Honestly, a, a bad tackle is a bad tackle, no matter what game it is. A friendly work, a qualifying tournament, uh, whatever it is, you name it, a bad tackle is a bad tackle. And I think the ref made a, I mean, it's an easy decision. And I don't know why the announcers and other people are trying to um, say, Oh, I mean, you, you could have given a yellow card first. No. I mean, that's not how, that's not how I mean, you would think. That's not how it works, right? Bad tackle is a bad tackle. But you guys tell me what you think if you saw that game. You know, look back at the tackle. Do you guys think he, he should have got a straight red? Or do you think he should have got at least a warning? Or is, I mean, definitely was a yellow. If it wasn't a red, it was definitely a solid yellow. But looking back on it, a lot of people think that just influenced the game too much. But I don't know. I mean, if we look going into the future, I'm going to talk about soon. I don't know if it really made a difference until one moment. So... For me, it doesn't hurt to give a red here. It's a bad tackle. It's reckless. Studs up. And it's just not good. Not good at all. In the 45th minute, U.S. swings a ball over the top to Jordan Morris. Jordan Morris is in on Chekovic, but Chekovic comes off his line for Bosnia and smothers it. And pretty much we go into halftime at this point. And we're all square at zero. However, I mean, it was a frustrating half offensively for the USA. I mean... As I said, they couldn't string together some passes at times. A lot of stuff went away. And um, a lot of, I mean, they just couldn't get any decent, solid attacking chances. As I said, you know, they could, they would uh, hurt Bosnia by running down the right-hand sideline. We didn't really see a lot of action on the left-hand sideline. But the right-hand sideline, they would try and swing in a ball and it would cross. But nobody was there to tap it home. And that was the issue. I mean, no, you just, you got to finish, right? Bosnia was giving them clear-cut chances, but the U.S. couldn't capitalize on them. So, I mean, I, yeah, you should be frustrated. You know, you don't pass up stuff that's on a silver platter. And um, hopefully, I mean, I just hope they would to clean this up second half. But anyway, for Bosnia, though, um, they, they started off pressure was, um, they started off really strong pressuring the Yanks. However, once the red card came, the Dragons had no choice basically to just sit back and play 10 men behind the ball. And later on, I mean, this would really actually surprisingly struggle for the USA as they couldn't break them down for a long time. And, um, but pretty much that's the halftime uh, points. Um, in the second half, you know, Bosnia does bring in a lot of load of substitutions and Years even more inexperience coming onto the field if the U.S. if you couldn't make it that much easier for the U.S.A. You know, including a goalkeeper switch. So um, the goal, their original goalkeepers out, a new ones in, and I mean they're literally. I mean, there's inexperience now. They're super inexperienced at this time once the subs come in. But then yet from the 45th minute to the 80th minute, um, but I mean both teams would have chances. But my God. My God, I mean, this <laughs> this is bad. I mean, this is sluggish, and I forgot what, I mean, it's been so long since I did a, a coverage on a men's friendly that I forgot what a men's friendly soccer match looks like, right? Because I've covered 
a lot of World Cup qualifying, which has been always high intensity. There's something on the line to play for. But in the friendly, I just forgot that, oh, yeah, I mean, many teams are just going to be like, ah, it's just a friendly, you know. Uh, we won't have to, we don't have to give it our 100%, you know. But it just, I forgot how boring at times a friendly could be. But, I mean, and this game really, really showed it. I mean, it was, uh, just sitting here for, like, the whole duration of the second half. I mean, I was just mad. I was like, the U.S. couldn't pressure 10 men. And just, you couldn't, it's hard guys, it's hard to watch. 10 men for Bosnia with inexperienced subs, and the U.S. still couldn't string together some quality attacking chances. I mean, I know they're young and inexperienced, but oh my god. I mean, you have to get something, right? Something, I mean, like, I mean, they made Bosnia look like a superstar defensive team. Being unable to break them down for a while, and then really in the eighty eighty eighth minute and beyond until the eighty ninth minute, this game was really just blonde, as Gordon Ramsay says on Hell's Kitchen to ludicrous chefs, mischief chefs. It's blonde. This game was blonde. It was really just annoying to watch at this time. I mean, seriously, the as I said, the U.S. could not break down ten men inexperienced. Sitting behind the ball, I mean, I and I guess you can make the excuse that Greg Bolger came in to plan for, I guess, having 11 v 11 and creating some tactics. But I mean, yeah, I mean, sure, you're. It would all it all went out the window once the red card came in the 40th minute. But you still, you have an extra man, work the ball around, constantly, move the ball to get some chances, and then take some shots. Like, my word. I mean, the U.S. was just, I mean, I don't know what they were doing. It, it, it was hard to watch. And as soon as I was about to lose it, just really getting sick of watching it, Cole Bassett says, and that's the goal scorer I forgot to mention, so sorry if I, if I didn't mention him in the open, but that's his name. Cole Bassett says, hold my horse. As Of course, it has to be a late goal winner for the USA. The Yanks get a breakthrough as Cole Bassett, um, he plays cleanup crew here and just... I mean, he just, in the dying minutes, I mean, the USA sends a couple balls in. Keeper's always on his toes for Bosnia. However, the keeper spills it right in front of Cole Bassett. And Bassett just buries this one in. And finally, finally, the USA, the Yanks break through. And it's 1-0 in the dying minutes. Of course, it had to be late. Yanks fashion, go to good old USMNT late fashion goals, right? Like the San Jose Earthquakes over here, the Goonies. As they said, the never say die, known for scoring late goals, notorious for them. Always late goal winners for the San Jose, or, or tires, for the San Jose Earthquakes, the Goonies. You know, and that's what, the, that's, that's what the Yanks are right now. I mean, this game, the Honduras um, Nations League, Qatar in the Gold Cup, um, Jamaica in the Gold Cup, I mean, Mexico in the Gold Cup, I mean... How many late game goal winners do you need? I mean, hey, they got the job. They get the job done. That's all that matters. And with that, the USA do hang on as they finish off 2021 on a strong note and break the record for the most wins in the calendar year. 17 wins. Greg Bolger is the first coach to do that. So great job to him. And I'll get more into it. But yeah, he's really he's gone from controversy to I mean obviously. That he the man that he met the myth the met the legend right, I mean he's he's taken this team through a lot and a lot of accomplishments like there's a couple accomplishments that are just milestones like by themselves, so I mean this was just to top it off with this was just a cherry on top, it wasn't pretty, but at the same time yeah, I mean it didn't really hurt them as it was just a friendly, but without that let's go to the stats, uh ten shots. For the USA to nine for Bosnia, both teams had three on target, seventy four percent possession to twenty six percent. Twenty six percent. Of course, the USA would get that possession after uh, Bigic in the fortieth minute would get that red card. Seven hundred twenty eight passes completed to two hundred sixty. So they were moving the ball around, but my God, I mean, I just kind of wish they had more shots and chances. They kind of wish they would have tested the Bosnian keeper a lot more, but. It, 
They won. Oh, fine. It's just a friendly. Yeah. Um, 86% pass accuracy to 62% pass accuracy. 14 fouls to 10. Two yellow cards to none. One red card, of course, that was Bigic in the 40th minute for Bosnia with a nasty tackle on Kellen Acosta. One corner to none. And five, I mean, one offside to none. And five corners to two for the USA. And, yeah, as I said, I mean, the USA, I mean, yeah, they got the win. They ended on a great note to close out 2021. Put, this was drawing the clo drawing the curtains on the year. And, yeah, um, I mean, I would argue, I mean, I know the win was kind of, I know the game was kind of sluggish, but in terms of the overall win, I'd argue that, I mean, and just close out the year, I would argue that this year was arguably, if not the best, it definitely got to be up there for the best in U.S. M&T history, right? I mean, look, they got two trophies. You beat Mexico three times in a year. And right now, they're currently in good standing in the Concord World Cup qualifiers. So, I would say, I mean, this is a darn good year for the U.S. M&T. The Yanks really put themselves in great spots. They really got an opportunity to, if not, hopefully a lot of fans bought into this, but sell the sport in the, in the U.S., Right, get some more fans in the stands and just sell the brand. You know, we got to rebuild. Remember, they still got to clean up this identity, right? From the 2017 uh, 2018 mishap against um, Trinidad and Tobago where they failed to qualify. So they still got to clean that up. And right now, it, I mean, they got to qualify for Qatar, but if they keep going the way they are, I say they're going to be in pretty good shape and the sport's going to continue to grow. and Excited to see, especially how much talent is being produced. And that was the goal, right? They got the win. And hopefully, we'll see how the uh, talent pool goes as more of these players go to, go to European teams. You know, including the dual national from Louisville City. He's going to Rio Sociedad. So, he's eligible for both Mexico and the U.S. So, whenever in time to choose, we'll curious to see what he'll choose. Hopefully, it's the U.S. But, um, I mean, hey. The USA got a lot of talent. I mean, they got a lot of even young talent rising too, which is incredible. And um, as I said, I mean, yeah, darn good year. And then in terms of the game, of course, yeah, the chemistry wasn't there for this year. And the guys are young. But obviously, you need some, I mean, if you play the same group that they want to play in the World Cup qualifying in January and February, they're going to have to clean some stuff up. And so I don't think Greg Broad is going to work on that too. So, uh, yeah, it'll be pretty exciting to watch. And not, yeah, hopefully watch them be better if they do play. And just hopefully they clean, get their act together too in some of the areas that are lacking. And then finally, I want to end the year or end the next to last announcement with um, last reminders to get your tickets to the uh, January and February World Cup qualifier games. And, um, you know, once again, you've got on the ho at home, starting at home, you got El Salvador and Columbus on in, um, in January 27th. And then you got Canada. You go to go to Hamilton up here to Hamilton, and you're gonna play against them. By the way, it's sold out, so you don't want to miss that game. And also, you got you come back home to Minnesota um, on February, I think second or third, maybe sometime in that February. It's in Minnesota against Honduras. For this window, you have to get points. I mean, as I said, that after this window, the last window is probably the toughest. You got Mexico at Mexico, and you got Costa Rica at Costa Rica, but you do got Panama at home. So going to Costa Rica and Mexico, you you don't want that's what you you got to capitalize in this window. That way you're not scrambling for points in that window in March. So you got to take care of business here, or else things might not look good. But with that said, we'll find out next year, and um, that pretty much does it for the for the game and the year. And my good, I mean, my word, just time flew by fast. Um, it was a great year. I mean, I started covering the USMT, um, the start of the Nations League tournament for this channel. So about six months ago, and um, we've already come to a um, close. So I, of course, I didn't cover the full calendar year, but it was still a really good year to cover. <laughs> really, really great um, time to really enter, you know, because they won the Nations League. Then they win the Gold Cup with a B squad or C squad, whatever you call it. And then right now, of course, with the World Cup qualifying, they're in good standing. So with that, I mean, it's a pretty good way to wrap up the year. And 
pretty much I don't see any other video coming released in the, in the 2021 calendar year. I mean, unless there's a subspecial. And so with that, I mean, that pretty much does it for the year. It is holiday season, so you guys make sure you enjoy your holidays and you have a happy new year. I'll see you guys in the next year. So with that, tell all your friends. If you like this video, make sure you like it, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends about it. And also tell all your friends, finish strong.